A choice sets before you now Living or dying Blessing or curses I know the time has come around To turn from your fighting And rest in His mercies Choose life that you might leave that he gives he gives you forever choose life the way that is true from the one who chose you your father in heaven oh, choose life choose life that you might be the life that he gives say he gives you forever Welcome to Choose Lie, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission, a caring church raising Christ-like disciples who will be agents of transformation in the world. Let's now join God's servant, Reverend William Okoye, for today's message. It is only people who have strength of character that admit when they are wrong. They take responsibility for their wrong. I like the way Mrs. Clinton Hillary took responsibility for the ambassador of America that was killed in Libya. The Republicans were trying to take advantage of it to run Obama out of the White House. Hillary Clinton came out and said, I take responsibility. It is my responsibility, not Obama's responsibility. It's my work to make sure that these people are safe. So if you want to crucify anybody, it's me. That is leadership. So there are a number of instances I'm going to give you this morning where people were tempted, like Job. When Job was tempted, what was behind the scene? Let us read Job chapter 1 from verse 6 to 13 i'm reading from the living bible one day as the angels came to present themselves before the lord satan the accuser came with them where have you come from the lord asked satan and satan replied from earth where i've been watching everything that is going on then the lord asked satan have you noticed my servant job he is the finest man in all the earth a good man who fears god and we have nothing to do with evil. Listen to the response of Satan. <laughs> Why shouldn't he? When you pay him so well, Satan scoffed. You have always protected him and his home and his property from all harm. You have prospered everything he does. Look how rich he is. No wonder he's worshipping you. But just take away his wealth and you will see him curse you to your face. And the Lord replied to Satan, You may do anything you like with his wealth, but don't touch him physically. Now, do you see what happened? What did Satan say when God was praising Job? What did he say? He scoffed and said, In other words, if I'm the one that you did that kind of thing for, I'll worship you. Who will not worship you? When you have protected him from all harm, protected his family, protected his children, and enriched him. If I am the one, I'll worship you. But touch his wealth now. Let something touch his property. It will cost you to your face. And God said, Let's have that test. That is the reason behind all the tragedies that Job went through. And the most painful of everything is that Job didn't even know why this thing was happening to him. Have you ever been to that place in your life? When things, with all your fastings and prayers and all the effort, things went wrong and you cannot understand why. Job was there. He didn't know where this problem is coming from. He was blaming God for his problem. Well, in a sense, because God was the person who started boasting about him in the first instance but god did that with good intentions but the enemy took advantage of that so you see the issue here is the love of job for god satan say he is serving you not because he loves you he is serving you because of the things you are blessed with if you touch any of those things he will turn back 
But thank God that at the end of the day, in spite of all the tragedies that this man went through, he still remained firm in God. And that's my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Now, like we have seen, sometimes God himself orchestrates these tests. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 1 to 3. First of all, from the King James Version, it says, All the commandments which I commanded this day shall ye observe to do, that you may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thy heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or not. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and feed thee with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make you know that man doeth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doeth man live. Who was responsible for this? Whatever else had led to their wandering about in the wilderness for 40 years, God also had a purpose in it. He wanted to teach them. The Bible said that, he said, I did that to humble you. Sometimes we are so prideful. And God allows certain situations to humble us. And help us realize that no matter who we are, we are still human beings. But the Bible says God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Why should we be proud of anything? Whatever we are, whatever we have, or whatever we are going to have or be, it's all just because of God's grace. We are all trophies of God's grace. So we have to live constantly with that in mind. Paul said, what do you have that you have not received? And if you received what you have from God, why are you puffing up? Whenever we receive any good gift from God, it's not an opportunity to be prideful. It's an opportunity to glorify God, to remain humble. Another reason he gave for allowing them to pass through all that, he said, to prove you, to know what is in your heart. Whether you are going to still continue to keep my word or not. You see, it is easy to worship God. It is easy to serve God when everything is going your way. But it is when your feather is ruffled by the challenges of life, we know who you are. We know how much you love God and how committed you are. So he said to prove you. And the third reason is to teach you that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. There are people who think that money is everything. Bread and butter is everything. So they kill their mother, they sell their children, they kidnap their relatives, they do anything. If you read the dailies, all these newspapers, and watch news and see what's happening in Nigeria, you can see that it's just God's mercy that is keeping Nigeria. Because Sodom and Gomorrah did not commit half of the kind of sins we are committing. Atrocities. Because people want to acquire material things. Because they have this distorted sense of value. That money is everything. But money is not everything. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if you shall gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Your soul is more important than money and more than anything. Your relationship with God is more important than anything. And when the devil attacks you or tempts you, it is to draw you away from God and steal your soul which is more precious than anything the world can offer you. Now, in the book of Genesis, chapter 22, you will find the temptation that Abraham went through. Let me read verse 9 to 12, and then verse 15 to 18. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his son, and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. Now, if you look at verse 15 to 18, and the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and had not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Hallelujah. Yeah. You see, if you look at the various tests that people of God went through in the Bible, some people passed their test, some failed. 
Abraham passed his test. You know the story of Abraham for many years. In spite of God's promise that he's going to be the father of many nations, he had no child. For 25 years, no child. Until he became 100 and the wife was 90 years old. When it became impossible for anything to happen naturally, God intervened and blessed him with Isaac. He didn't even allow them to finish celebration and jubilation for waiting for 25 years to finally have his promised son. God went back and said, offer him to me for sacrifice. How many of you will still believe that that is God? Many of us, especially because of the current theology that is being taught in the church today, we say, I bind you, Satan. All the witches and wizards behind this, I kill you, I slay you, I burn you, I fire you, I roast you, I eat you. Yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> but <laughs> because Abraham had worked with God for so long, he knew when God speaks. He knew it was God. And one thing he didn't do, you can't see it recorded, he didn't tell Sarah about it. If he had told Sarah, what do you think will happen? There will be no issue. <laughs> So those of you who think that uh, everything you must tell your wife and it shows you are a good uh, man, think again. There are certain things you know that your wife will not be able to handle. It will destroy her. You find a way of navigating her through that. <laughs> Hallelujah. So we see here that Abraham passed his own test. And uh, may God help you pass your own test in Jesus' name. Now let me state this very clearly. There's no way you can understand. I don't understand all the time the dealings of God with me. Many times I ask questions and questions and say, This God, what type of God are you? With all the prayers, with all the fire, with all the faith I have, what is happening? How many of you ask that kind of question? You are not alone. You are in good company. Now, if you look at the Bible, you will see that the Bible made it abundantly clear that we cannot, in this side of life, fully understand the dealings of God with us. No matter how spiritual. Choose life, Choose life Choose that you may live, that you may live, says the Lord. Say. Join us next week for the concluding part of this message. Dear listener, thank you for being part of today's program. If you want to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I accept I've sinned against you. Have mercy on me and forgive me in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, wash me with your precious blood, give me grace to live the rest of my life for you. Thank you for making me your child in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And for the rest of our dear listeners, gracious Father, bless them and give them the grace to live by the word they have just had, that it might be well with them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. God richly bless you. You just listened to Choose Life, a program of All Christians Fellowship Mission. I believe God has touched your life through this message from his servant, Reverend William Okoye, the General Overseer of All Christians Fellowship Mission. This message and several others on CDs, DVDs, and books by Reverend William Okoye are available at number 2, Lagoni Close, off Nile Street, Maitama, Abuja. Get your copies now. For bookings, cancelling, and prayers, call 0803. 5887764 the number again 0803 5887764 or log on to www.acfmission.org that is www.acfmission.org for resource materials Join our high-impact worship service this Sunday at any of our branch churches nearest to you. Jesus saves, heals, and provides. Let's meet again same time, same station next week for the concluding part of this message from Reverend William Okoye. God bless you. Why don't you choose life? Oh, oh, oh. You can choose life.